I don't want to shrink. I don't want to get smaller. I don't want to shrink. If I wash too much, I'll be washed down the sink. Mum keeps on saying, go and have a good wash. But if I'm clean all the time, I'll look shiny and posh. Have you seen what happens to soap in the bath? It gets smaller and smaller. No, don't laugh. It isn't funny to be washed away, to be withered and wrinkled, to disappear down the sink. I don't want to get smaller. Dirt does me no harm. I don't want to shrink anyway. Dirt keeps me warm. I didn't mean to buy Elizabeth Corn. I didn't mean to spill the milk or break a dinner plate. I didn't mean to kick the cat or come home very late. I didn't mean to frighten Gran or pull away her chair. I didn't mean to burn the toast, get butter in my hair. I didn't mean to make Mum cross or eat up all the cakes. I didn't mean to make excuses, but everyone makes mistakes. Please, Mr. Dentist by Jean Spackler. Please, Mr. Dentist, please be gentle with my teeth. I may look tough, but underneath I'm trembling like an autumn leaf. And it would be a great relief if you didn't look at them today. I'll come when you're less busy, say, next week, next year, when I'm 45. That's if we're both still alive. I'll brush them 20 times a day if you'll just let me get away. I wouldn't really mind a filling if it wasn't for the drilling. I've heard its nasty grinding noise. Oh, won't you put away your toys? Those shiny metal bits and bobs. You like to poke in people's gobs? I wouldn't mind one tiny bit the fizzy pinkish rinse and spit. I love the tilty backwards chair, but this is more than I can bear. What's that? It's over? I can go? I wasn't really scared, you know. My teeth are fine today? That's great. See you in six months time, Lene. I haven't done my homework, miss, but I've got a good excuse. I forgot to close the gate last night and Rex, our dog, got loose. I chased him down the high street and he ran at such a speed. But I caught him outside Barclays Bank and put him on his lead. Well, we were just returning home when the bank door opened wide and this robber, he came running out. He must have been inside. He grabbed me by the collar and he pushed me in his car. He said that I was his hostage, but he wouldn't take me far. I shouted and I shouted and I kicked him on the shin. I said I had to get to school to hand my homework in. I told him that my teacher would be very, very mad, but he just drove away miss and said, well, that's too bad. And as for handing in my homework, he said he couldn't give a hoot and that if I didn't close my mouth, he'd lock me in the boot. Two police cars started chasing him as he headed out of town. Hee-haw, hee-haw, the sirens went, but he would not slow down. At the junction of Victoria Road, through the window, I did leap, but I left behind my homework in the car on the back seat. So, I haven't done my homework, miss, but I've got a good excuse. It all started with an open gate when Rex, our dog, got loose. I didn't mean to, by Elizabeth Corley. I didn't mean to spill the milk or break a dinner plate. I didn't mean to kick the cat, come home very late. I didn't mean to tear my dress or lose the front door key. I didn't mean to lie a bit. You're always blaming me. I didn't mean to frighten Gran or pull away her chair. I didn't mean to burn the toast, get butter in my hair. I didn't mean to make mom cross or eat up all the cakes. I didn't mean to make excuses, but everyone makes mistakes. My computer ate my homework by Ken Nesbitt. My computer ate my homework. Yes, it's troublesome, but true. Though it didn't snore on level and it didn't chomp or chew. 
It digested it completely. It consumed my homework whole. When I pressed the shift and enter keys, instead of shift control, it devoured my hours of typing, every picture, chart and graph. And it left me most unsettled when I thought I heard it laugh. I would guess it was a virus or it could have been a worm that deleted every bit but didn't prompt me to confirm. I suppose I might have pressed escape instead of pressing save. But regardless, my computer now will never misbehave. For I found a good solution and I smiled to hear the crash when I chucked it out the window and it landed in the trash. Our teacher, by Brian Moses, our teacher to have sisters, keeping the beat of some silent tree, only he knows. Our teacher drums his fingers on his desk, on the window, on anything, when the room is quiet, when we mean to be writing in silence. Our teacher cracks his knuckles, clicks his feet, groans his teeth, his knees are knocking the edge of the desk. He breathes to a rhythmical beat. When he turns his head in a certain way, there's a bone that cracks in his neck. When he sinks to the floor, we often think he will stay on, stay on his knees. Forevermore, he is such a physical wreck. Our teacher bangs his head against the wall, or pretends to. When Wendy comes up with another dumb remark, our teacher, our teacher says we're annoying with all our silly fuss. Perhaps he's never really thought how much he irritates us. Thank you.